Hello, and welcome to Consciousness Coaching Level 1. This class is on values. Roy Disney said, it's not hard to make decisions when you know what your values are. In this program, we work with students on bad bucket values and good bucket values. Bad bucket values are linked to the deadly sins or the repus or the vices or the passions. These are oftentimes the ones that show up with the second question in the TED talk where the client is judging something. If we strip it back to the deadly sins or the vices, you'll see that they will repeatedly end up with probably about two main bad bucket values like pride, gluttony, envy, lust, wrath, sloth. And you'll see them repeating those. They were taught to not have those values verbally or non-verbally. However, the parents showed them otherwise. So this incongruence. So one of the things we do is we normalize our clients' bad bucket values. It's part of who they are that makes them human. In the adult steps, we actually help them to define their good bucket values. This could be loyalty, honesty, authenticity. This will lead to the rule book. This will lead to them having a very clear boundary of what they're going to live their life by. These are not always very clear, even though clients will state um, with conviction that they're authentic or honesty, for, in, for instance, when you actually strip it back and ask them to define it in measurable terms, they oftentimes cannot. So we need a philosophy of life. Everybody has a philosophy of life, whether they know it or not. Most people have not stripped down their life choices to identify what the philosophy of life is. That's part of what we do with clients. So as I mentioned, bat bucket values are linked to the deadly sins or the vices. This is why they have the zero to 100 swings to keep them in child because they're trying to hide those. The good back bucket values oftentimes are in the parents' good bucket values. I remember asking my father how he stayed humble. And he said, my mother was the most humble person I knew. And so my father has humility. And one of my main bad bucket values is pride. So I know I have the capacity to be humble. It's something I struggle with, but I know that it's there. The client may not always have it listed in their good bucket values of their parents, and that's fine. But they um, will let you know if you probe enough what those values are. We ask for the top two values, and it cannot be family. Now, there are clients that will do what I call reverse values. They'll want to always play the villain. They'll only want to highlight how horrible they are, how slutty they are, how lustful or lazy they are to an extreme so that they can negate all the good. This is a reverse of the zero to 100 of the bad bucket where they're owning their darkness so much to hide that they have any good. Oftentimes this is linked to a parent being very virginal or very godlike. They're a martyr and the student, I mean, the client has no other option but to reverse that value. So I had a student for many years and her mother was a born again Christian. Uh, her father had died and she had stayed a virgin once she was born again. So my student only had the prostitute archetype to honor. So she was constantly um, putting herself down and saying her mother was the nun, her mother was Mother Mary, for instance, and she was the prostitute. So you'll see this at times. This tends to happen with people that have severe shattered snow globes more so than anybody else. Helping clients, especially in the adult, develop a philosophy of life and defining their buckets, their, their good bucket values is a key component of this work. And they need a personal philosophy of life. So they have a rule book in which to live their life once they are completing their work with us. 
So where do we get our bad bucket values? We get our bad bucket values linked to the impure thoughts or desires that they inherited at conception. The parents oftentimes say, do not have pride, do not have laziness in this family. We aren't lustful. And then the client wants to cover up, even though when we start to probe the incongruence and, and, and shatter that snow globe, they realize that they actually are those things and that their parents were not perfect. But this is part of the process. These bad bucket values linked to the sins or the vices are as human as they get. They're all rooted in desire. The body has a desire and it's low level consciousness. So we tend to want to live in this perfectionism or these zero to hundred swings to cover up these impure thoughts. And the most natural thing is to have these desires and these bad bucket values. So a big part of our work is to encourage clients to embrace this part of them and be comfortable with it. When we create a value system or a philosophy of life, that's what keeps those desires in check. So if you're very prideful or you're very slothful, then you would create rules around how slothful, how prideful. Greed, for instance, is one that shows up in my practice quite a bit. So I ask the client, how much is enough? And they get to decide. This is all random. And let's say they say $15 million, then that's okay. Then we make a plan for when that person has reached $15 million, zero, 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 one dollar. So now they have a plan to keep that greed that they're judging in check. It's not our place to judge what they want and how they want to live their life. Our job is to create a space so that they're comfortable with their vices and passions. Perfectionist thinking is something you'll probably come across a lot. It's the belief that you could eliminate desire, judgments, or impure thoughts. And this is absolutely impossible. These type of people tend to create conflict at 10 out of 10 because they're so afraid of making a mistake. Their conflict is so tied up in a high number so that they use the fear uh, to not move forward. So this person tends to create very, very high conflict, either internally as health issues or externally in conflicts that to the surface, to, to the earthly consciousness appear very valid, but it's so that they could tie up their conflict and their energy and their creator energy into that conflict so that they don't have enough to create anything because creation is never perfect. So judgments are confessions and they're great. And I say this to clients over and over and over again. If I know what you're judging, then I know what your inner values are, especially your bad bucket values. So it's very important to, to, to sort of normalize the judging. And when you judge, you could go back to the bad bucket of the parents. You can go back to the vices or the sins or the passions and really see what the person judges. And we hope to normalize their pride, their greed, their gluttony as just being human and help them work through that so that they could reduce conflict. And despite having those vices, they're still allowed to use the rest of the energy, the rest of what's left from their conflict to create and move forward in the world. You are still allowed an awesome, full, loving life despite being a desirous, low consciousness being. So the word valer means to be in good health in Latin. Valer in Spanish is valer, which is to be of worth. You can only have good health, and that could be financial, that could be physical, that could be sexual, that could be emotional, when you have a solid value system established, and these values are established in your beliefs. So again, judgments are confessions and they're great. This constellation is called Eridanus and it's called the river of the judge. And if you see, it looks like a river kind of coming downhill from the heavens down into the embodiment 
the souls are carried through this Eridanus river constellation into the body. This is so important. We cannot uh, burn karma. We cannot do deep inner work. We cannot raise consciousness without a body. So you cannot work out your own salvation unless you're in the form. This Eridanus constellation is linked to Taurus and Taurus is the, the um, astrological sign of desire. So it's as if we start here as a soul, we come down this river of the judge and we enter into a body is the, is the significance of this. So these judgments tell us that we're human, remind us that we're human, remind us what we value. And when we keep those in check of 48 to 52, we balance those, then we balance them with the good bucket values. Then we're living in both light and dark, low level consciousness, high level consciousness, earthly consciousness, spiritual consciousness, however you like to call it. So we judge desires. Judge means to hold or declare. And we judge these because we don't want to declare them. We want to actually hold them close to our heart and pretend that we don't have them because DES, the prefix means removal of a group. And we're actually afraid that if we own our full desires, our bad bucket values, that we will be removed from the group, the family primarily, subconsciously, and of course, friends, family, society. So what you want to hold is what you value, and it's okay to have bad bucket values. We do secretly desire these. We pretend that we don't like them, although it's something that we thrive with because they're linked to the thought at conception, the emotion at pregnancy, and of course the de desire is body at birth. So it's not something that we ever can overcome. We can never let go of our bad bucket values, our low level consciousness, our birth story, our conception story, our pregnancy emotion. What we do is we process these things and we transmute them. So desires reveal your worth and what you value. They're linked to the bad bucket values. When we reveal these desires, we're actually psychologically afraid that an apocalypse is going to ensue. And we're afraid that something will happen catastrophic if we actually reveal them. So we're in a constant self-betrayal process with our values. Therefore, we cannot have health. Thank you.